Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. I'm Jim Hacking. I hope you all are well. I'm coming to you live from Washington, D.C., our D.C. office. Uh, I came up for an interview, not the easiest interview I've ever been on, that's for sure. I had an interview in the Fairfax office at 8 o'clock this morning. I um, flew in last night, went down to Charlottesville to see my son, Yusuf, and I had dinner with him and his friends. We had a really nice time. And then I got up super early. I only had about five hours of sleep, so I might be a little sluggish. And I might not go too terribly long today, maybe 40, 45 minutes. Um, <clears throat> glad to be with all of you today. After, after I came back, uh, we had a nice lunch with Florencia and Fatima and Christian. <coughs> Fatih and Flor are two of our great law clerks um, here in D.C. And Christian is one of our attorneys. He actually came the interview with me so we could sort of handle it together it was it was a, a not an easy case um i don't know if you guys saw it but there was a story in the wall street journal yesterday that detailed one of the reasons why some of these naturalization cases are taking a long time and the very the very difficult thing to believe is that they're saying that some of their files are locked away in an underground bunker near Kansas City, Missouri, and that nobody is willing during COVID to go in there and get the records so that they can process people's cases. Now, anyone who's watched the show for any period of time knows that we've been watching them drag these cases out for months and months, and everybody's wondering why. And this great reporter in the Wall Street Journal did a really nice job um, telling America, why this is happening. So people have called me conspiratorial. People have called me crazy. People have called me um, bad mouthing USCIS. Um, but I was right. At the end of the day, my theories were proven right for the most part that there are forces at work slowing down people's cases that have nothing to do with COVID, that have nothing to do with background checks. It's it's much more about an incompetent agency that isn't doing its job, that refuses to do its job, and which is not being held accountable by the American people. So um, the waiting room is filling up. So if you want to join us, uh, we dropped the comment in the, the link in the comments. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, People are asking if they can call. You can call the office. The number is right there beneath me. Olamade's wondering if he can call. Um, 314-961-8200. If you're in the waiting room and you want to come on, you got to be on camera or else I'm not going to pull you up. I'll just go ahead and read questions. Let's talk to Lidvine. Hi there. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. What about you? I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you? What can I help you with? So today I came with a question that has to do with my naturalization. So my dad, um, he brought me here when I was 13 and he was already um, a citizen before I got here. And then now I'm currently um, 19 um, and I have my green card and everything. And I tried to do the N-400 and they told me that I must already be a citizen. Um, so I'm just scared that whenever I submit my application, it might not go through and I might lose my money or so on and forth. So I wasn't sure. So that's like my. Yeah. So the question, so the reason that, so when did you come to the United States? Uh, about six years ago. And how old were you when you came? Uh, 13, 14, 13. Yeah, I believe. Right. Yeah. And when you came, you got a green card shortly after you arrived. Yeah. So I'm a permanent resident. And then how old was your dad when your dad, how old were you when your dad naturalized? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't, I can't remember that, but I well, was that, super. That, yeah. That's the most important thing because you have to be, if, if you as a child are admitted into the United States as a lawful permanent resident, and if you're here for a certain amount of time before dad naturalizes, then you may or may not be a citizen. So it's your burden to prove that you're eligible for citizenship. So either you need to file an N-600 because you already are a U.S. citizen, 
or you have to file an N-400 so that you can become a U.S. citizen. It all depends on the timing. It's all that it is. So you, if you file the wrong form, you will get denied and you'll lose your fee. So if I were you, what I would do, if you don't know all those dates, I would do a Freedom of Information Act request for your immigration file and for your dad's and then do a timeline and figure out if you already are a U.S. citizen or not. Okay. Because I believe I was I was already born, like, see, probably I would say I was 10 or so when he got it. Um, so, I don't But know. you weren't in the United States. I was not in the United States. I was back. Oh, I thought he naturalized. I'm sorry. I thought you said he naturalized after you got you came on your green card. No. Well, I would need to look at I would need to look at all the timing. If you were outside the United States, then you might not be a citizen. So we have to look at the rules and we have to look at all your timelines in order to figure that out correctly. Okay. All righty. All right. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's talk to Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Um, so I don't know if you can hear me well. I, I have some echo. Yep, sounds fine. I have no echo. Go ahead. I'll be quiet. Right. Uh, um, so, yeah, there's like feedback that is uh, coming in at the end. Um, all right. So my question is, we we did apply for my green card. I've been here four years and my wife is uh, is a citizen here. She's American. But I am not allowed to work, as you know, since I'm waiting for my uh, green card. And uh, um, it was, I think we applied 2020, uh, 2020 in August. So it's been a while as we wait. But my question is more regarding about the taxes. I don't have the social security number. I don't have the... Um, uh, what is it? The tax number. My wife last year filed by herself. So my question is, do I have, as I wait for my social security number, do I have to apply for a tax ID number so I can go ahead and file taxes? Because I've been doing some odd jobs here and there. You know, I get bored and it's, it's, it's just been home all year. I don't know how to do about the taxes. Did you apply for a work authorization card? Yes, we did apply for the work authorization. And then, uh, yeah, my social security and uh, my travel. But yes. none, of those, none of those have come yet. Yes, none has come yet. And so did she say that she was single on her tax return or married? Uh, she said she was married, but she filed as single. single. Because you don't have a social security number. Yeah. So what's your question for me? So my question is, uh, since I do some odd jobs here and there, I don't have like, I'm not employed or anything, but I do some odd jobs like, you know, more, more the loan and things like that to keep busy. Mm -hmm. Do I have to go ahead and uh, file taxes or should I wait until I get my authorization? I think you have to talk to an accountant about that. I'm not a tax accountant. So that's more a tax question than an immigration. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, it's my uh, other last question. My other last question is: um, It's been it's been a year since we applied, and uh, last last year in March they asked for more documents, which we sent in. So recently, I got uh, an invitation to go do bi biometrics, this uh, the scan for my fingerprint, which is in two weeks. Do you know how long, roughly? Maybe after that, it might take. Probably three or four months. What did they ask for in the request for evidence? Uh, they just wanted a uh, financial our financial, you know, like proof, you know, with me and my wife. And we just responded and said, like, that's not needed anymore. Like my lawyer responded back and said it's not required anymore, according oh, to the Biden administration, I think. Because of um, because of uh, public charge? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's it's been there roughly a year and four months now. Uh, so they recently, I just recently got a mail to say I should go and do biometrics. So, yeah. So, yeah, the RFE slowed things down. Oh, uh, okay. okay. All right, good luck, Alex. Yeah, thank you. Bye, buddy. All right, that was Alex. Let's say hi to Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Hi, I have a question. Like, I am abandoning asylum for already four years, but I'm not the head of the case. Like my husband is 
and I'm going through the divorce now. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she is a green card green card holder. She has a ten years green card. She was married six years ago. And can she apply for me? Can, can she probably. file for me I thirty and I for? You I can't. I, you, I, no. You won't be able to adjust off that most likely. Be, were you in status yes. when you filed your asylum claim, or were you not? Yes, I was in, in travel status visa B one B two. So. The problem is that there's like a, a six year delay on the adult citizens of U.S. citizens and the, the adult children of U.S. citizens. And so you're not going to be able to maintain your status all the way now until you adjust. So I think you're going to have a pretty hard time getting it through your mother. Do I have any other way to switch from pending asylum to studying to st student visa or some any other visas? You can try. The Biden administration is trying to figure out right now whether they want to change the rules right now, they're saying that the old rule says that the status that you've been in as someone seeking asylum doesn't count for status to change to an F one. But my understanding is they're revisiting that issue and they're going to decide here in January. So I might have some more information for you on that in February, but for right now, I think it'd be pretty tough. Okay. And if I will be divorced and I'm, I'm not the, the main on the case for the asylum petition. I will lose automatically the work authorization and you need to file your own asylum legal application. If you, if you fear persecution back home, you need to file your own asylum application. Regarding that one, first one. Regarding why you fear going back home, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Good Thank luck, you Victoria. Watching. You got it. All right, let's talk to Zara. Hi, Zara. Hi. How are you, Jim? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, I have to file for the seven uh, I-751. Mm -hmm. And in the part where the mailing address, they asked me in care of uh, what I have to put in there, in my name. Sure. Oh, okay. And uh, me and my husband and my two, uh, my, uh, our two daughters, we want to go travel in this summer okay and uh, can we go travel when does while you're waiting for the i-751 when did you when are you going to file the, the 751 we, we're filing this week filing this week yeah so what will happen is you'll get a letter and the letter will say this is a continuation of your of your lawful permanent resident status and they'll extend it by like 24 or 30 months and so then when you travel you'll bring your passport your two-year green card and your extension letter, and that's what you'll need to travel. Okay. So, how long we can we stay there? We want to stay like for one month to see my family. You know. It's fine. Okay. And uh, another question uh, for the affidavit: Do um, is it is a, is a important? Even if what I have kids with my husband. What affidavit? For, to uh, for support the the marriage, you know, bona fide. You mean? You mean? Do you, you mean? Do you mean? That because you have two kids, do you need other supporting evidence that the marriage is ongoing? No, like uh, uh, the is a, uh, having kids is a strong case, or is it just normal? Yeah, it's it's fine, but you still need to submit regular marriage evidence. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, that stuff. But I don't I don't think you need affidavits from friends and stuff. Excuse me. I don't think you need to send an extra affidavits from friends and stuff. Okay, okay. I want to for my sister in law. She would write it. If she, if he, I mean, yeah, don't forget to get it notarized. It doesn't hurt. Might as well. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And uh, what about the cover letter? The cover letter? Yeah. Is it important? Yeah. You should do a cover letter and you should list okay. all the evidence that you're submitting. Yeah. And then make okay, sure you perfect. Keep, Thank make sure you. Make sure you keep a copy of everything in case anything happens. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for your help. Good luck, Bye -bye. Zara. All right. Let's talk to Clement. Hi, Clement. Uh, hi, Jim. Uh, oh. Thank you. Thank you for your good job. And uh, I, I really enjoy uh, how much education and uh, how much relief you've been bringing to us. Awesome. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Uh, my, my, question, my question is this. Uh, I put in my EB in 2019, uh, after which I got uh, EAD first time, and uh, I got EAD second time. And uh, when the EAD of the second time is about four months to expire, 
uh, I filed a renew renewal, after which uh, I got an uh, uh, extension of uh, 180 days. But during the process, uh, I got RFE on my EB. Uh, immediately, I responded to the uh, to the RFE, and uh, I got my I-140 approved. So after I got my, RF, uh, my I-140 approved, I was expecting either uh, my EAD or my green card. But up to now, nothing has come. And uh, the most unfortunate thing is that uh, uh, 180 days has expired. And currently, uh, I'm actually looking for, uh, I've been attending an uh, interview here and there, and they got uh, so much opportunity. But of course, uh, I don't have uh, anything with me, no green card, no renewal EAD, and uh, I'm just uh, contemplating on the, uh, what is the next thing and what can I do? Although I've already called the USCIS and uh, I expedited my, my case, I told them what I'm going through. And they, they told me that uh, the expedite would take uh, seven days. It's uh, more than 10 weeks now. Uh, nothing has been done. I don't know how much or uh, wh what to do. Thank you. When did you file the I-140? I-140 was uh, 2019. And when did, did you file the 45 together with it? I filed uh, I-140, I-485, uh, 131, and the uh, 765, all and in 2019. At the time you filed all that, what was your current status at that time? As at the time I filed, um, okay, I came in with a, a B2 and uh, I filed uh, uh, eBay after 90 days, after 90 days of my entry here, about 120 that's, days after I entered here. That's bizarre. Why did you do that? Who told you to do that? Oh, my lawyer told me that uh, it cannot put in my uh, EB immediately I I came in, that uh, he needed to wait for three months. But they're going to think you had immigrant intent. You came on your visit, then all of a sudden you have a job lined up. That sounds that I don't, I really don't want you to answer on camera, but that's something that I think would really give them pause. Like, just like a marriage case, I don't care about the 90 days. The question is, what was the purpose of the visit? Did you really do what you said you were going to do on the visit? And how in the hell did you all of a sudden just decide to file for adjustment based on, um, I would not have filed that case. I, 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 this is all very strange to me. So I think that's why your case is on pause. I think you've confused them. I don't know many people who file for adjustment based on employment from a B1, B2. In fact, I can't think that I've ever even heard of it. I might be wrong, but I, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Okay. Because uh, he actually, I uh, owned that uh, uh, NIW, which of course, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Probably I needed to contact you after the... Yes, you should. Wait, So, so, so this doesn't even... Yeah, that's why I've never heard of it. So this doesn't even have an employer. So you drop out of the sky, you show up in America on a B1, B2, and then you file a national interest waiver exception for the PERM process and a standalone I-140 without a sponsoring employer. Uh, the condition of a, that particular one I filed doesn't require employer. Because you did national interest waiver. Yeah, national interest waiver doesn't require that. So I, a buddy of mine... A buddy of mine said on Twitter yesterday, another immigration lawyer, he said, most, mo it seems like most people think that national interest waiver means it's available for everybody. Um, how in the world could USCIS ever conclude that an immigrant who arrived in the country 90 days ago is doing work in the national interest of the United States? I don't know who filed this for you, but it's a, it sounds absolutely crazy to me. Okay. So yeah, I think I think we need to talk, or you need to talk about it to someone other than the attorney who filed this case, because I think you got some bad advice. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Clement. Thank you so much. You got it. Hi, Amir. Good evening. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Wonderful. Uh, I just had a quick, simple question. I and I actually, I think you might have touched on it a little bit with the last gentleman. That's okay. Um, if someone is here on a F1 student visa and they fall in love, how 
quickly is too quick for them to enter into a marriage with an American citizen? Like when, when would it look bad? Well, wait, so how long have they been in the United States on F1? Uh, Less than a month. Yeah. So that really pisses off USCIS. I have a video on this, Amir. So, so the question is, again, it's that same thing sort of that I was talking to Clement about, which is, you know, what's your intent? You went, somebody, an immigrant, a a foreign national went to the embassy and said, hey, I'm coming to study in the United States. Can you give me a visa? Here's my I-20. And they say, oh yeah, sure. Here you go. And then the person shows up and they want to get married a month later. Now, this is, this is bad in one of two ways. It's bad because either the foreign national and the sponsoring spouse, the U.S. citizen or green card holding spouse, it, either, either they knew each other more than a month ago or they didn't. And this right. is sort of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of a thing. So if they knew each other beforehand, then that probably suggests that they decided to go the F1 route to get around the long two year delay it takes to bring your wife or husband to the United States. So that that's a problem with immigrant intent. If they, if, if the person arrived a month ago and they just met and they decided to get married, then that goes to whether or not these people are crazy and are just trying to get someone an immigration benefit. So I would say if you, if anyone goes to school on an F1 and only goes for a month. Let, let's say that they didn't get married right away. Let's just say the person came on a student visa, enrolled in school, said, yeah, I have enough money to pay tuition, and then didn't, or dropped out after a month, or dropped out after six months. That really pisses them off, and that makes them think fraud. Yeah. So, I mean, I think generally the student's best off after getting their degree, so two years, four years, something like that. I can live with it if it looks like they're making progress towards an actual degree. But if it looks like the F1 was just an end run around long delay times, that's, that's messed up. Yeah. Okay. That answers my question. All right, buddy. Good luck. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for coming on Amir. All right. That was Amir. That was a good question. Let's talk to Janet. Oh, Janet's locked up. Hey, uh, I had a question up here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Hey, by the way, if everyone could just leave us a comment in the, comments where are you watching and what do you want me to talk about the most what do you like that we talk about the most leave me a comment let me know where you're watching from and Henek, that was what i wanted to pull up Henek asked can you talk about the eb3 visa interview you attended today how were the questions well this was an interesting one um this particular person has been in the united states for a really long time on an f1 visa um sort of the opposite of what we were just talking to amir about so this person was on an F1 for eight years or nine years and never actually got a degree. And then once they found an employer to sponsor them for a green card, they stopped going to school. And like I said, they never got a degree. So the officer was sort of poking around about two things. One is how had the individual supported himself financially if he was going to school full time and not working without authorization in the United States? And then the other main question was about, well, well, why uh, didn't you ever get a degree? So, you know, everything's fair game when you go to USCIS and you never know what's going to come up. We sort of figured that this was what was going to be asked about, but um, that was what came up today, Henek, in today's interview. All right. So um, looks like Daniel's in Kentucky. Henek is in Florida. Chuck Woody's in Oklahoma City. Nella's in Jamaica and Omalaya's in Georgia. So hello, everybody. All right, let's talk to Kojo. Hi, Kojo. Kojo's been waiting. You're on mute, my friend. Kojo, you're on mute. Hey, Jim. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Are you staying warm? Yeah. What's up? Hello. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I call came through. That's okay. What's up? Hey, Jim. Can you hear me? me? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Hold on just a minute. Kojo. Hello? Hi, Kojo. All right. Kojo's out. He couldn't couldn't get it together. Let's talk to Mimi. Hi, Mimi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? 
Good, thank you. Now, uh, I have a question. I am um, asylum approved since 2014, and yeah. I only applied for my green card a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, around that time. Yep. Mm -hmm. The status right now, the last thing they posted online was that the they got my fingerprints um, in in May, something like that, about like they did my uh, biometric fingerprints without me going. Mm -hmm. Now, um, my question is, I'm getting married. I've been in America for almost 10 years. Now, the person I'm marrying is an American. Do I continue... Uh, my asylum and not submit my green card through marriage or what's the best way to go about this? So, I mean, you picked a real, you picked a really bad time to apply for your green card, right? Like if you picked it right sort of when COVID was about to happen. So yeah, your case, your, your case got hung up with all those cases that got filed right around that time. I would encourage you to continue with your asylum case and wait and see what happens. Still go ahead and get married to a U.S. citizen. If you have to apply through them later on, that's just fine. But I wouldn't throw in the time that you've been waiting. I think you're probably getting pretty close. So I would just let it play out. But then if I were to, uh, the only thing is like um, through asylum, you are unable to go back to your country, correct? Uh, now through marriage, you're more able to travel wherever you want. Well, except here's the thing, Mimi. And if you watch my videos, I, I, I yell at people about this all the time, right? So here's the deal. When you applied for asylum, not when you got your green card, but when you applied for asylum, you swore under oath that if you went back to your home country, that you were going to be tortured or persecuted or thrown in jail or killed, right? Correct. Those statements that you made under oath, they don't change just because you withdraw your green card based on asylum and marry a U.S. citizen. My position well, not, is not to go back to my country, but in general, like it, with the asylum right now, um, I can't renew my my passport to travel anywhere, like not going back to my original country. But to be okay. able to renew just a passport to be able to travel, I, I, I'm unable to do that. But, like I can't leave the country in general. Okay. I have an hey, advance. You, you can get you can get your you can get your um you can get your uh, travel document, your refugee travel document and, and travel. But I got that as an advanced parole. I didn't get an actual document to be able to travel on a flight. You have to file for, you have to file for a reentry permit. The advanced parole goes along with your green card. That's not what I'm talking about. There's an actual refugee travel document. It looks like a little passport, um, but it's from America. And that's what you would travel with in lieu of your passport. Okay. Okay, so you think I should not apply for any marriage stuff, wait till I get my green card through my regular one, and then go from there? Mm hmm Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for answering my question. Bye, Mimi. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Yep. All right, great. I think Janet's been waiting. Hi, Janet. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. What can I help you with? Uh, thank you so much. I called the office a day ago and I have a question. Um, I need to know if I'm going to I, Jen, I can't understand you. Your audio is all jacked up. I don't know why. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? A little bit. It's still, it's something, something's weird. Go ahead. I'll try and listen. Okay. So I'll try to loud. I about that. Okay, so I came here on F1 and I'm now married. And I applied for the green card in November, second. But then I dropped out of school and I want to know if it's going to fit. I'm sorry, Jen, I can't understand you. I'm sorry. The audio is really bad. Maybe try calling back or something. I'll let you back in, okay? Okay. I don't know what that was all about. That was weird. Hi, Shigar. Can you hear me? Boy, everyone's, we're having technical difficulties today. I don't know what's up with that. All right. Kojo left. His car is empty. Let's talk to Mide. Hi, Mide. Hi, sir. Um, hi. Um, I have a question to ask, please. Go for it. So um, I came here with the F1 visa. 
So um, through uh, my daddy, actually, my daddy's bank account and everything, what he left for us, because I came here 2016, my daddy died 2015. But his bank and everything, I came here through student visa. I have my brother here. He's a U.S. citizen. He has his family. So I couldn't go through with the school when I got here. I went to school for a few months, then I stopped. Then I got married 2017. I got here 2016, January. I got married 2017, September. Yes. Then my husband tried to file for me. I got my work authorization the first year, 2018. Got expired 2019. And in between, I got an intent to deny. Mm -hmm. And I got a lawyer to, I mean, tell them this is it, this is it. What we did did wrong in the interview or something. So it wasn't true, but... At the end of the day, um, um, in between everything, I and my husband, we got uh, into a fight. Then um, I just, he told me to give him some space. I gave him some space. Oh, I think your phone's ringing or something, Mide. Your audio dropped. Yeah, go ahead. So, yes. so, you, and your, so you, you and your husband got in a fight was the last thing I heard. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, then I left his place, I left his place, then went to my brother's place for a few weeks. Then it wasn't even up to a month. So I got a letter when I go, when I went back home, I couldn't even go in again. I think it changed the lock, um, lock key and everything. Then I went back because I have this um, mail. Can we, stuff. Can we back up for a minute? What was the reason for the Noid? What did they say in the Noid? What, what was the reason for the what? They said you said they sent you a notice of oh, intent to deny, right? Yes. Well, yes. Why were they going to deny it? Um, they said I said something in the interview about our TV, our, our the size of our TV, and it was fifty five inches. I said it, and they said that was not what I said. I mean, I know what I said, and I told the lawyer, and they were saying something. I mean, because they called me and my husband separately, so I know that I said the right things. And they, what they wrote in the letter was like I said the wrong thing. I was like, that's not it. So okay. the lawyer told them that. Then when um when I when I, when I got back to the house, I didn't see him. I think he actually moved, so I couldn't find him anymore. Even with, I called him, he didn't pick up. So I have this letter from the, I have this letter from the immigration, and they sent me the letter. They said um they denied me because they went to my house, and my husband told them that it's been months. He saw me, and he wants to withdraw his petition. That was a lie. But I okay, couldn't so do anything about it, so what, I got denied. You got denied. Okay, so what's the question? I got denied. So when I got a lawyer, um, no, I got denied, and I tried to divorce him because I couldn't get hold of him. Even the judge I mean, summoned him, but he didn't appear. So I had to get divorced because I couldn't find him on um, uh, me, just me, the lawyer, and the judge last year, March. I got divorced. So okay. uh, the lawyer was trying to tell me, the lawyer was trying to tell me that I can file for VAWA or I can file for asylum again. So I wanted to know if I can file for asylum after all that. Is it possible to file for asylum? Well, you, and, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to file for asylum within a year of arrival. Of course, I know. Mm-hmm. So there's the, the officers have discretion to waive that, but these days they're not waiving it very often. So that's going to be a big problem for you. So... It's like a no-go area. And Vawa, it's a no-go area too. But I have my mom here, and she's a green card holder. So I want to know. That's nothing for you. That doesn't do you any good. Okay. The Vawa and the asylum, right? But can my mom file for me? Because she's a green card holder. Your mom's case, your mom doesn't help you. What The Vawa, was there violence in the relationship? Or did did he abuse you? Well, I mean... Emotionally, because we usually we usually fight almost all the time because he tries to get money from me whenever I'm working. He tries to get most money from me. And even the bank accounts, before I got married, I have this Ottington account. Then I we did a, a joint account together. So I think it was the primary owner of the account. They changed him to the primary owner of the account. But the account okay. was mine. So all my my money was there. And when I said I didn't see him, he withdrew the money and blocked the account because I was trying to access my account on my phone. But he withdrew the money and blocked my account. And they okay. said, I mean, the bank said maybe he, he is able to do everything be- that because it's joint account. I don't know why, how he could just withdraw my money and just block the account. Okay, and I so couldn't get rid of him. 
I think you might be able to do a vowel case. We'd have to look at everything, but that sounds like your best bet right now. But also at the same time, you know, they're, they're going to be sort of suspicious of you because first you had a student case, then you had a spouse case, and now you have a vowel case. It's like you're just doing whatever you can to stay in the country. Hmm. So that it's going to, it's not going to be an easy case for sure. Oh, okay. But is, is that where my mom can file for me? No, green card holders can't file for their, uh, I mean, she can file for you, but you can't adjust. You're out of status. You've got no status and they think, and then they think your fate, your marriage was fake. So I don't think relying on mom's a good plan. Hmm. So my best bet is to vow, not asylum. It sounds like it. I mean, that's, okay. that's just me. That's just me on the internet talking to you. I haven't looked at any of your files. I don't know for sure. Okay. Uh, can, right. can I give you a call later then? Sure, sure, sure. My number's right there on screen. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Nice meeting. You. Sorry you're going through all that. All right. Looks like Kojo came back. Kojo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, let's roll. What do you got? Okay, so um where do I start? Okay, so um my in initial application, right? Um I have a chart of from a previous marriage, right? But um, you know, when I was, you know, when I was um, falling. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's back up. Let's back up. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Ghana, but um, I live in Connecticut. When did you come to the United States? Um, I first came in 2015. I went back. Then I went back again, and um, in, in um, then I came back again in 2016. On a visit visa. On a visit visa, yeah, but um, when you got your visit visa, did you tell them that you were married when in back in Ghana? No, no, um, I was never married in Ghana, right? But um, I had a child when I was still young, so I had a child like my okay. high school days, okay? So, okay, so you come to the United States on a visit visa, you come and you go, you come and you go, and then what happens immigration wise? Oh, no, okay, so um, I mean, for right now, um, I've got my green card already, okay? So, what's the question? So the the question is um initially right um when I was filing I didn't add my daughter to it because um her mom wouldn't give me a birth certificate so I did I didn't say that I had a child they don't believe you and now you want to sponsor the child I was just talking about this at lunch they don't believe you dude they just because just because they won't just because the baby mama won't give you the birth certificate doesn't mean you don't have that child to list on your forms they think you lied about that um. Uh, yeah, so you're not gonna be able to sponsor that kid. You, they think they think you lied. Okay, that's fine. And then um, another question, right? So um, I've been married, you know, I've been married. I'm mean, we've been married for like five years now, right? And um, so um, it's time that um, I've been thinking about um, you know, applying for the N four hundred. Okay, on but, the five uh, year yeah, but, five year rule or three year rule? No, on the three year rule. Okay. So um, I wanted to know. Um, so, but um, I've been planning on going back, right? You know, because I haven't been back in like four years right now. I've been I haven't go back to Ghana. So okay. um, I've been planning on going back, like for like a visit, right? So is it gonna affect me when I go, or I need to wait after, after application? You know, after financialized, like to like to go for a visit, I can just go no, now. You you don't. You can go now. I mean, you got your seven fifty one extension letter, and you have your old green card, and you have a valid passport. I, I, I mean, um, the extension letter. Um, you know, of first, um, I got the you know the um the eighteen months. Or, you know, right. Already, it's almost expired, then, and they extended it to like twenty four months right now. Right. So. So when does I'll, that when, when does that end? When are your twenty four months up? No, I, I have I have a lot of time because I yeah. I just got a twenty four months. I got a 24 months, I think, um, in like, like three months ago. So I have over a year. And you're, talk, you're talking about, you're talking about just going for a, a week or two? Probably, you know, a week with my wife and, you know, and then the kids. Yeah, I think you're fine. Okay. So with, with my daughter issue, there's no, there's no chance. I mean, I'd have to look at everything, but it doesn't sound good. They, they've heard this movie before. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't bring add my child, but now I want to sponsor them. They they really get pissed off about that, and then they go after your green card for lying to them. Okay. So, what's the next step? Like, do you think you um you know you can help me with the application? You know, because um I've been 
I've filled out, you know, the the um the N four hundred already, but I haven't submitted it yet because of you know the whole daughter issue. Yeah, yeah, we can help with Nats the naturalization, sure. Okay, all right. So I um um I guess um I'll give you a call. Yeah, Later just call the I'm call off. the office and ask for Daniel. He'll he'll get you all set up. Oh, no problem. All right, thank you so much. I'll, I'll really Thank you. Have a good day, buddy. See ya. All right, let's talk to Janet. Oh, Janet, Janet's gone. All right, let's talk to Trish. Hi, Trish. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. You can't. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for what you do for the immigrant community. You're sure. amazing. Oh, my God. You're amazing. Thanks. But I have uh, two questions for you. I spoke to you the other day. So my for my stepdaughter, she's already documentary qualified. Mm -hmm. But we're in a new year and I'm wondering if I need to get my taxes done because I'm not ready to do that yet. So would they ask for 2021 taxes or they, the affidavit is complete? They it's might. Done with? They might. Um, they might ask you're, it. You're for, you're for, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, um, I'm, he I'm hearing you now. I'll yeah. Just, yeah. You can watch the replay, too, if, it, if you can't see me or hear me. But basically... They could ask you for them now. I don't think you have to hurry to get them done. Usually they don't start asking for those until mm -hmm. about April or May. So you should be okay. And then okay. if they, I, okay. they might ask for it at the interview, they might ask it for, for it from the NVC, but I think you should be fine. Okay. Awesome. And I have one more question. My cousin went for his interview and when he went, they gave him a form 221G and it's asking them, it's asking him to submit the W-2 from 2020. He said he keeps submitting it, but they keep updating it as case refused. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on, why they keep saying refused. That could be. That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, a lot of times the online uploading stuff doesn't really work well. So he needs to reach out to someone at the embassy and try to get him to unlock it or something. That's it's what probably, I thought. It's probably not unlocked. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, have a great day and thank you. Bye, Trish. See ya. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Let's see if Janet's got her audio fixed. Hi, Janet. Hi, Jim. Can you hear me? That's a lot better. Yes, thank you. So I think you said you were on an F1 student visa, and that's all I heard. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for giving me a second chance. Uh, I called your office on Monday, and I was told I'd be called back yesterday too, but I didn't get any call back, so that's why I'm here to okay. ask a few questions. Sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so I'm an F1. I was I was an F1 student, and I got married. And I want to know if dropping out is gonna affect my case since I I only got the receipt like two weeks later after sending my I-485, I-765, and the I-30. Mm -hmm. So when I want to know how it's gonna affect me. When did you come on your F1? I came in 2018. Fall. So for the last three years, you've been going to school? Yes. And then um, things became tough, you know, life up and down. So we got married and five months later, we just decided I should just put a hold. So after getting married five months later, I, I dropped out. So, I mean, you're the third person to ask me about this today, so maybe I need to do a video. But basically, in, in law school, they, they teach you this concept. It's called the rule of reasonableness. What's reasonable, right? And so is it reasonable that someone would come on a student visa, study real hard for two, two and a half years, fall in love with an American citizen, and then decide to take a break from school? To me, that sounds reasonable. Right. What what doesn't sound reasonable is that question we had before from I think his name was Amir about, you know, he was like, how soon after someone enters on a student visa, can they drop out and get married? Can they do it 30 days later? That doesn't sound reasonable to me. So to me, as long as you have a good explanation for all of it, I think that having been on a student visa solid for two years plus, I think you're OK. OK. Uh, and then I was just wondering, it's a by the way. Because I am, I know the wait times are so long. How long should I wait for my employment authorization? When did you file the When did you file the case overall? Uh, November seventeen. 
so two months ago. Yes. And you haven't, have you gotten a biometrics notice or anything in the mail? No, just the receipt. It came out two weeks later, the receipt for all of them. Yeah, I mean, other people will probably be able to comment in the comments better than me, but I would imagine that you'll probably have your biometrics in about two more months and then your work card probably four months after that. So probably eight months total from November. So probably, you know, June or July. So June or July, I might get my work card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, sorry, I have another question. So it's about you're taxes. You're, you're, the, you're the last caller. So you're fine. Go ahead. So it's about taxes. Um, so is my husband supposed to file for like a joint? Cause I've not been working. I only yes. worked in the first semester. Uh, yeah, yeah. In he, should, he, should file, he should file jointly, especially since you have a social security number for sure. Okay. All right. Um, so, G, uh, Jim, please, I, I would like to get a call back because I spoke with the person who was very helpful, but I didn't yeah. get a call back. Janet, tell me, tell me what um, the first initial of your last name is. I'll look it up right now and I'll make sure they call you back. Okay. Uh, okay. My first name is obviously Janet. So the second initial is Z. The first initial is what? O? J. 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 So you're Janet J. Yes. J. And then my second initial is V. V? V. Yes. Hold on. Let me, hold on. I'm just going to look this up real quick. V. So the, the guy said something about interview that like, uh, you guys are going to talk to me about the interview. So the first letter of your last name is is what? What's the first letter of your last name? V. V like Victor? Yes. Huh, I'm not seeing you in here. That's weird. Mm. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, just hold on. I'm ending the show anyway, so I'll end the show and then I'll kick everyone out of the waiting room and then we can talk. Okay. Hold, just hold on a second. I'm gonna put you back in the waiting room. Okay. Thank you. Sit tight. Thank you. All right, everybody. That'll do it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow with Daniel San at noon tomorrow. We'll see you then. Okay. Thanks everybody.